Hello everyone, I'm uh, Brian Croydragon, as you know, and we'll be getting started in just a moment. Okay, let's get started. Just going in town three today. Then what? Jeez. Then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Uh, in fact, I remember how I said I wanted to re. Wait, let's start again. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to have you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Urgh. Well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, Ha! Huh. Well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So in other words, you're saying you liked it? Uh, Azuki's retort gets caught in her throat. You're so... You're so... You just you don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that. You don't have to go around announcing it in the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I said... <clears throat> I say that mostly to myself. That Suki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Well, fine, I guess. Only because Monica won't make me if I don't. Yeah. We saw this yesterday, but uh, from the people who did who weren't here and didn't see it, I'll give you a bit of time to read. Right, that's enough time. Yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. 
I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about someone writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Alright, next up is Yuri. <coughs> Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, so sorry, I'm going to start speaking. Uh, um, it's fine, don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay, okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Er, uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Oh, so it's not bad? No. Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I can't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we- Son of a bitch! <laughs> Let's run out again. I can't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. Ah, oh, jeez of it. It'd be so much easier if it was an RPG. Like Golden Sun, where they have the nail portraits. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there were specific writing habits that are usually... Only typical of new writers. And having been thrown at myself, I kind of want to pick up on them. Okay, so it looks like Yuri's is, uh, the same as if you do Sayori's route. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their start very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing start separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the start and the expressive it's our weekend. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just forming them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased though. Biased how? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiled dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? I, I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. Fuck! Ah, This would be so much easier if it was just portraits. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it was short, it was really descriptive. 
Granted, I do occasionally slip up with uh, Undertale, so I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really, I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild, something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost story? Hoo hoo hoo. Are actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Valentine. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But I remember that poets often express their. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon being left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Only one person left and that's Monica. Hi, Valentine. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad you hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ha ah, ha ha ha. Don't worry, Valentine. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll... But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. I like it, Valentine. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Ha ah, ha ha ha. Oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something that Suki would write. And she's a good writer too. So I'm taking that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Sean Silverstein? No. Have you ever read anything by Bernard Cornwell? Maybe a long time ago. I read something by Bernard Cornwell just this morning. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can't see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ah ha ha ha. Ah ha ha ha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? 
Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it, then. Okay, read this yesterday, do I want to read it again? Hole in wall. Ugh, jeez, let's just skip. Since we already know what it says, so what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Ah uh, ha ha, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of song has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well I'm not sure if I know how to put it. Well I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, because it's kind of coming on stronger. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's running tip of the day. Sometimes when you're running a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a, fi on a specific point. If you try hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, uh, let's skip ahead. Since we've been through this already. We were through this yesterday. Help me, Sayori. Uh, skip. Because again, we went through this yesterday. Okay. Now to get your CG. Tenacious. Miser- Damn! Unrestrained. Incongruent. Melancholy. Variance. Disaster disoriented. Contamination. Philosophy. Ooh. Misfortune. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, uh, skip, let's just, oh, please, not let's be juries. Yes! Uh, if this is going to be a, a stream of just me going back to, to get juries, well, that would be a boring stream now, wouldn't it? I'm only talking. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh... Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. 
She sneaks another little glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. The glance only makes her hide her face deeper in her back. Sorry. I was just spacing out. The motherless sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I was focused then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book that you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I want you to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh... Well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. She's attracted to you, you dumbass. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad you're here. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. It's not so. What's it about anyway? Well... Mm -hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just want to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships. And her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? You know, we made it, it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Ah ha ha ha. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you sure you're not a fan of that sort of thing, Valentine? Not sure about Valentine, but I've enjoyed a good dark story every now and then. Of course, I love fairy tales. Uh, Fair, Brown, and Trembling, the, which is the Irish Cinderella, is quite good. Uh, Trembling's eldest sister, Fair, pushing her into the sea where she's swallowed by a whale. Uh, it's not Brunner's grim dark, but it's still darker than the original Charles Perrault version. Because as we all know, Charles Perrault wrote Cinderella, not the Brunner's grim. No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so, she's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kind of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. And horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals and their own philosophy that they can believe in. And suddenly when you, you thought... Let's try that again. And suddenly when you thought you were related to the protagonist, you, they're made out to be the naive and for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel I should let you know that I have this problem. And I let things like books and running from my thoughts. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. It just means you're passionate about reading. 
The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, uh, that's... well that's true. In, in fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago you were... You said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get in the book. Ah, fudge! Let me just get in the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. All right, it's fine. Even if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not really used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Now just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading and company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry. I was just... Yuri, Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, and this should work, right? I snort my desk and turn this up against Yuri's and then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once... Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Uh, okay, I said we'd be going until 3, but, um... I'm having second thoughts, and I think we might just call it here. I'm Brian Croydragon signing out. Stay straight.